We Both Podcast. This is Corp. And this is Ashley. And we're coming at you live from Boston. Switching it up this morning with a Wednesday recording. Yeah. I got so excited because I thought tomorrow was Friday. And unfortunately, that is not the case. Not the case. I feel like the weeks have been going by slower. This week has been because we've had nothing going on after work. Maybe, yeah. That, that probably has to do... That's all it is. All it is. And Ashley and I have been in a zone the past couple of weeks of being booked and busy. And this week, for whatever reason... Well, because I feel like all of our plans are always together. Yeah. So, like, our schedules are synced. But this week, we just don't have anything going on after work. And, boy, is it needed. It's so needed, but I also like, don't know what to do with myself. I wish I could relate. I still feel like I have no time in the day to do anything. Well, that's how I felt up until yesterday, but that was because I finished the entire season of Summer House in just a couple days. So So that was occupying all of your time? That was occupying all of my time. Like, even during the workday, it was on in the background. Like, I was... How many episodes? Um, maybe like 16. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah. What's your review? I really just wanted to watch it for the um, context for Giggly Squad. Well, the context, but also the, the freak is it called? The reunion. Oh, okay. And then I got to the reunion and I was like, okay, well, all the clips that were online pretty much showed what this is. I didn't really (laughs) miss anything. (laughs) But I wanted to know like the drama between like the couples. There was an engagement um, called off. Oh, wow. It was good. (laughs) Well, I'm so happy for you that you were able to finish that so quickly and, you know, you fulfilled your goal of now being in the know. Yeah. I don't know if I would do it again. Okay. I'm going to be honest. It just, like, wasn't that entertaining. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy, like, now I have context. So, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a nice little binge. Nice. Are you binging anything at the moment? No. I was watching Modern Family from the start, but and I still am, but that's not binge-worthy TV. That's background noise mm-hmm. and some laughter before bed. But no, I'm very much not binging anything at the moment. Yeah. Taking recommendations, though. Although I'm kind of taking a break now. This is what I always do. I binge something, and then I have to take like two to three weeks off. Yep. Because I'm like, wait, there's more life to live. Yes. So... That's where I'm at now. I started knitting last night. I'm really getting back into my hobbies. Wow. I miss cooking. I haven't cooked in so long because Joe and I have been gone every weekend. So there's no yeah. groceries. And then Joe ends up going on a Monday, which means he doesn't have a grocery list. Plus, we have plans during the week. So there's nothing to cook. So I've decided this weekend at the lake, I want to just like chef up. Fun. Yeah. Our garden is just blooming out there wow so we have a lot of sage to use and then i think i don't even know what the other one is jalapenos time oh oh it's some green thing and i joe and i both can't remember i'm pretty sure it's time that's a random one yeah i think it just like looked good when we were there (laughs) we're like we need like one more gotcha which one do we grab and then our basil plant got blown over by the wind the stem broke hate that Joe, I look out there yesterday, I'm like, wait, Joe, like, how is our basil plant up right now? He's like, oh, well, I just picked up and, like, stuck it back in. You think it'll grow? <laughs> I'm like, no, Joe, I don't think so. Well, should we get into today's episode? Yeah, let's do it. So today, we're chatting about one of Ashley and I's favorite things, our morning routines, and how to become a morning person. This is something that's crucial in the lives of anyone trying to do both. And honestly, just so important when you have a busy life, because if you don't have time, essentially a morning routine, how I phrase it, I feel like I am not a morning person per se, but I've trained myself to become a morning person because I genuinely just want more time in my day to do things that I love. And after work, sometimes it's not as easy for me. So waking up early is unfortunately what it comes down to, but has changed my life for the better. 100%. I just got like a flashback when you just said, well, I'm not a morning person, but I've trained myself to become one. And I feel like this is a moment that Matt and I bond over. He's like, oh, I can't can't talk to her in the morning. Not a morning person. (laughs) And it just brings me back to college 
Courtney is always up early. She'll be up early with the group. But, like, you can't really look at her. And I used to think that she was, like, so mad at me. I'm like, did I say something last night? And then come to find out, it's just, like, <laughs> give her a second in the morning. Anyways, I just got a flashback to that, the good old days. Remember when we were roomies? Yeah, that was crazy. Was I can't crazy. believe we didn't live with each other post-college. I know. That's wild. Maybe it's, like, all for, for the, the better. best, though. Yeah, what if we, like, got into a big fight? Yeah, I mean, I have no idea. I really don't foresee that happening. I but don't see that happening either. Yeah, wild. Matt still experiences that to this day. Like, I am still not... So I prefer sleep over getting up in the morning, but I force myself to get up. Otherwise, I'm miserable and dragging for the rest of the day, which we'll get into. But no joke, I wake up... When I wake up in the morning, if I blink, I will literally be asleep again asleep yeah like I will blink for the first couple times in the morning and like it is a struggle to open my eyes like I will actually be dead asleep so I have to force myself to get out of bed but there have been times where I get in the car I drive to the gym with Matt and I sit in the car for a second I'm like should I just sleep in the car right now instead (laughs) instead of going into the gym and the way there's been like a handful of times where I've almost done that like truly like maybe stayed in the car for like (laughs) 10 more minutes as Matt's working out and then I'm like this is pathetic I need to get my booty in there oh my god Uh, yeah all to say anyone can become one yes what is your experience like how is your relationship to the mornings I mean I've always been a morning person. She's just so chipper. I am Courtney's worst nightmare. Like the alarm goes off and I'm like, good morning. (laughs) Rise and shine. (laughs) Like I'm the worst. Uh, Yeah. But I envy you in that way. That's just so nice. Yeah. I get it from my mom. My mom is the same way. Like no matter how much she had to drink the night before, she's up at like 6 a.m. I she walks out of the room she has her coffee like she will never tell you she's like tired hungover nothing she's like good morning time to go let's get up do you need a coffee and I'm like wow that's me that's very pleasant that's so me yeah so that's just my experience but I also come from a family of early risers aside from my mom my dad also is up at like 4 30 5 a.m every single day so the morning routine is also something I'm just so passionate about I feel as though it is a personality trait at this point I somehow find myself discussing this with everybody I talk to (laughs) and they're like wait like how are you up so early and I'm like hold on let me record this podcast episode and I'll send it to you (laughs) because I really think it changes your life like Court said you don't even have to be a morning person but if you are a busy human specifically a woman in their 20s trying to do both trying to have a social life trying to have a successful corporate work life see your friends do all of the things work out you really don't have an option and Court and I go talk about this all the time but the difference between this is more specific to workouts but just moving that workout to the morning frees up hours of your time yeah and I think the act of waking up is a struggle however I think the pros and the sense of accomplishment and preparation that you feel for your day before your day even starts outweighs the actual act of waking up in the morning and when you think about it like the reason why I don't like to look at my phone first thing in the morning is because it sucks me in and makes basically takes my energy away from like what I want to do when I like actually wake up early and give myself time. And I think when we like live this life, which is so silly to say, but when we are going throughout our day, we are like at the service of other people around us Mm -hmm. somebody calls you you have to answer the call somebody texts you you have to give them a response somebody emails you your day gets derailed and you have to answer that you're we're working for companies and people that are working towards goals that are not our personal goals so if we want to do anything for ourselves example right now we're recording a podcast for something that fuels us like 
it's so nice to carve that in in the morning so that you have a block of period where you're literally living for yourself. So whether it be a workout, whether it be a passion project, like all you have to do is find one thing that brings you happiness, whether it's a, a walk before your day starts and you have to log on to your computer, a call with a loved one, like doing that makes me more excited for my day to start because I'm living for myself and not just for other people. 100%. I love that so much. So should we jump in to honestly the very obvious and simple steps of creating a morning routine? But yes. the point of a morning routine is to not have it be overcomplicated. You and can't overcomplicate, you can't overcomplicate it. No. it. It needs to be something so simple and something that you can do no matter where you are. I think we've also talked about this in past episodes, in past seasons. Like the point of waking up in the morning and kind of starting your day on the right foot should not be dependent on the environment that you're in. It should be a few simple steps that you can do anywhere that makes you feel like you're in control of your day as opposed to your day being in control of you. Totally. On the overcomplicating step, I remember every year I try to come up with a new morning and night routine. I'm like, okay, my alarm goes off at this time. I chug a water. I wake up. I take eight steps to the bathroom. I tongue scrape. Then I have to do my water pick. Then I brush my teeth. And it's like I map out every single thing and all these additional not necessary steps. Yeah. And I don't even accomplish all of those things one time. Yeah. Like the simpler, the better. The goal is quite literally to just get you up at the same time every day. Yep. That's it. Yeah. That's the only goal we're trying to achieve. So while these steps are simple, I think they're going to help you not overcomplicate this if you've always wanted to become a morning person or even just improve your morning routine. First one is arguably my favorite, but setting a weeknight bedtime. And I find that this is helpful because it's so easy to sneaky, like stay up, like watch one more episode of your show, scroll a little too long on TikTok, be on FaceTime with a friend, like that they call you when you're right as you're about to go to bed and then they call and then you're on the phone for another hour. Yeah. There's so many reasons to stay up so I think just announcing your bedtime to yourself or maybe your roommates or your partner is like hey I would like to be in bed by for me it's 9 (laughs) p.m and I know that's so jarring and I don't think you need to take it to the extreme but last night I was in fact in bed by 9 p.m and it was wonderful that's beautiful yeah and I find that the earlier you go to bed obviously the earlier you can wake up but There's just one less excuse to not get out of bed in the morning. It's so easy to wake up and you're going to be tired every single time, no matter what. But it's a lot easier to say, oh, I need the sleep when you were up a little too late the night before. Totally. And my bedtime is not as aggressive as that. But I honestly would get in bed at 9 p.m. if my day allowed for it. I just feel like Matt and I have a later dinner schedule, etc., But my goal is to be in bed by 10 p.m. and be sleeping at the latest 11. However, I do fall asleep like before 1030, like around 10 every night. It's pretty much in bed, going to bed immediately. See, that's so great. I take so long to fall asleep. Mm. My mind just Races. races. And I've been doing this weird thing that I wake up at 3 a.m. every single morning. (gasps) jail the witching hour that is terrible at the same time every morning we should look into that yeah but I found that if I wear a sleep mask I can easily fall back asleep so it's like maybe I wake up but I'm not looking at the clock yeah so it doesn't disrupt my sleep yeah but yeah it's been weird I wake up at either four two 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 no Four. I was gonna lose my mind. <laughs> I'm like, you're a liar. No, 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 no. Angel numbers do not exist when I am sleeping because I am a rock when I sleep. Thank God. But I either wake up at 4:30 or 5:45, right before my alarm, alarm. goes off, because I have to go to the bathroom. And that—that's kind of perfect. 
No, because then I'm like, oh, I need to go back to sleep. And I honestly could start my day. Like I, I'm awake when I, I'm, I have to pee so badly that I need to run to the bathroom. Like at that point I'm up, but I'm not going to stay awake at 4.30 in the morning. Well, not 4.30, but the 5.45 is kind of perfect. Yeah. If I was a chipper morning person, I'd be excited. But I was like, I had 15 more <laughs> minutes to be asleep. And then I obviously go back to sleep and shut my eyes for 10 more minutes and I wake up even less prepared to wake up than 15 minutes before. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not supposed to, like, you're not supposed to snooze your alarm. Like, scientifically, when you fall back asleep, you're disrupting, like, your sleep cycle. And, like, no matter when you wake up, you're going to be groggy. But sometimes I just have to do it. Yeah, the way I do it is I have one alarm that goes off, 535. And then I have my phone alarm that goes off at 5.45. So I have 10 minutes to just kind of like lay there, get my last cuddles in. Yep. And then 5.45, like I have to get up. I would say one of the more crucial parts about waking up in the morning when you want to be a morning person is you want to wake up nicely. Like you want something that's not going to startle you out of bed. So I think for everyone, it's a little different. You have a hatch alarm clock. You have your way. I, on the other hand, have an Alexa. So I say, Alexa, please wake me up to, I'll label my favorite artist at 6 a.m. What is it right now? Well, it's been Noah Khan for way too long because now I don't, like I sing the songs in my sleep and it doesn't really wake me up. Yeah. But last night I think I said Alexa wake me up to I don't know top hits or something okay and then is I think it started it played a song that I didn't like so we're gonna have to rejigger that Mm -hmm. um but yeah sometimes I say Justin Bieber but that's just a me thing clearly (laughs) I I feel like that's kind of fun I've never set an alarm to wake me up to music do Sabrina Carpenter oh my god it immediately gets you in like a yeah uh, I feel like a fun mood I think you would really really like it I highly recommend trying it okay maybe I'll try it tomorrow you should I don't know if I ever told you this but Matt was trying to get us out of bed because there was a cycle in our relationship where we just would not get out of bed Mm -hmm. so he found this bright idea to get this like antique alarm clock not actually antique, but so fucking old that it all it had was one setting that was like, ah, ah. oh my god, <laughs> like the most aggressive, terrible sounding alarm clock, and to put it to put it outside of our room so, so that we'd to have to up? like walk up to it. He it played the first morning. I thought there was a fire. I was so scared. I want. I literally woke up, screamed in shivers, started to break a sweat. <laughs> And I was like, Matthew Almeida, throw that away. Never again. What in the world? I was like, my cortisol levels are through the roof. He's like, Courtney, shut up. Uh. <laughs> That's so funny. No, it's so important because then, then your tone is off. Your yes. tone is off. I wake up on the wrong foot when somebody does not wake me up nicely. Yeah, yeah. Like my dad, when I was growing up, he'd have to come in. He'd rub my back. He'd be like, Courtney, he used to have a, he actually used to have a wake up song. He used to sing me a song to wake me up. Do you remember it? Like in high school. Oh my God. If I called him right now, he would know. Call him. (laughs) Is it too early? Good morning. Uh, You're on speaker with me and Ashley right now. Quick question. Hey. Hey, good morning. So we're on the podcast and we're talking about morning routines and In my mind, I just remembered, you used to, like, sing me a wake-up song in the morning. What was it? Oh, God, you're killing me. Wait, was it, good morning morning to to you, good morning to you, good morning, dear Courtney, good morning to you. I'm dead. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was exactly it. And what, you'd have... But I did it in an annoying voice, the most annoying voice I could possibly. Play. Did it and get? That's what used to, What's that? And did it get me out of bed? Yeah, it would get you angry, but then you get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. That's so funny. Yeah. I mean, you know how my dad wakes us all up at the lake. Yeah. 
slams door open, lights on, get up. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. So aggressive. Anyhow, yeah. where were we? Before you can even wake up nicely, the concept of quality sleep is just, you hear it more and more. And whether it's the aura ring or your sleep supplements or the sleepy girl mocktail, like there's so many things that can now aid you to get better quality sleep. Yep. And there's a reason why there's all these trends and it's because it's super important. Yep. I've noticed a huge difference. Like difference when I am not sleeping well, I am a horrible human. I don't feel good. I end up getting sick. I don't feel motivated. I'll literally get up early and then I'll have the urge to crawl back into bed and like have such a lazy day after just because I woke up early. So I think just paying attention to what makes your sleep better, what makes your sleep worse. Like I have to, I've noticed that if I have coffee after 2 p.m., I will not sleep. Mm. No matter how little of a sip of coffee, I don't know if it's mental or what, but I could not have an afternoon coffee. Yeah. So little things like that, I'm like, okay, well, if I want an extra coffee today or a little afternoon pick me up, I just need to have it by noon. Yeah. So that's something that I've implemented and that I've noticed. So I think just taking note of, oh, I did this yesterday. It didn't make me sleep well. Or, hey, I did this yesterday and I slept really well. Taking note of those and then slowly adjusting what you do before your sleep. Yeah, totally. And for me, it's, I can't doom scroll before I go to sleep. Like I, I really try to limit like the TV in the bedroom. I try to limit the the screen time like an hour before bed because I don't get a good sleep. Like my brain is still going, 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 even when I'm sleeping and it definitely impacts the quality of my sleep. So yeah, maybe like you end up having dreams about about whatever you're watching. A hundred percent. Or if you're on Instagram, all of a sudden you're like, why did I have a dream about so-and-so? This and person. Because you saw them. Yeah, no, my Terrible. I- my issue recently is Matt has been watching this show called The Vikings. Mm-hmm. And literally all it is is like war, raping, huh. like te- like genuinely terrible, <laughs> terrible. We're, he's about to be on the season finale. I can't, I've never been more excited for a show to be <laughs> over. I will have nightmares about all the things I just mentioned because this man has the audacity when I fall asleep, he'll put the show on. So in the background, as my brain is finally unwinding, all it's hearing is stabbing and raping and all of these things. Wait, in bed? Yes. On like the TV on in the your TV room? As I'm asleep because I sleep Wait, like that's a rock. Crazy. But I'm like, oh my God, like Matt, like why did I dream about the Vikings last night? I didn't even watch it. And he's like, uh... I don't know. I don't know. But I'm like, you were watching it in bed, weren't you? You were watching in bed. He's like, maybe. Wait, that's crazy, Matt. Yeah. So hate that for me. So rude of wow. him to do that. So rude. But yeah, content that you consume throughout the day, especially close yes. to bed, really impacts your sleep. So be aware of that. Yeah. And then you guys know uh, my biggest tip is magnesium. Mm-hmm. Just taking that supplement before bed, both in a cocktail and or a mocktail. And the little capsules yes why is it so hard (laughs) guys i'm a little sleepy this morning (laughs) despite (laughs) despite talking about morning routines um also i've been seeing like magnesium spray oh yeah i'm like that seems nice yeah there's like topical magnesium aloe has one that you can like roll onto your wrist and your pressure points and stuff yeah Another thing that's helped me, this is so niche and nobody else would have this, but I have super dry eyes. So when I went to the eye doctor, she was like, girl, your eyes are so dry. I'm like, I know. What can I have? And she's like, okay, I'm going to give you this cream. So it's this tube this big and you just take the tiniest amount and you put it into each eye, like one little dab, but it makes your vision go completely blurry. It's like if I was blind. Uh in a way, it's kind of amazing because as soon as I put it in, like I'm done. Yeah, you can't for the do night. I can't else. do anything. I can't see TV. I can't see my phone. I can barely see the time on the clock. So <laughs> it's kind of a good way to really commit to going to bed. That sounds really forking scary. It's kind of fun. No, <laughs> it's I, it's a little fun. Oh my god. Yeah. So I was. This is. We're gonna digress for a second. Mm-hmm. But I was at the. Doesn't digress mean? To get back on track. 
this wouldn't be the first time that I say the <laughs> antonym of what I'm trying to say. Let's I, see. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know no. vocab. Digress is leave okay. the main subject temporarily. Okay, okay. Because people will like go off on a, a tangent. tangent and they'll say, I digress. Yeah, like, And yeah. then they come back to but it. But meaning like, I, I digress. Meaning I, I digress. went off topic. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Guys, so fun fact about me is that I always say... Not always, but there have been crazy points in my life, like making a public speech, and I say the complete opposite of what I'm trying to say. This lives rent-free in my head, and I wasn't even there. Yes. So, so for my high school graduation, my parents threw me a party with friends, family, boyfriend at the time's family, just like everybody in one room. And on the spot, they were like, Courtney, do you have a few words to say? And I'm like, uh, 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 uh. and I was that's stressful verbatim I said thank you all so much for coming you guys have been detrimental to my success <laughs> thus far <laughs> and everyone just stared at me and I was like did I say something and they were like did you mean to say instrumental and I, I w- like it was so funny and nobody lets me live it down uh, now all of you don't yeah. need to let me live it down. Yeah. But yeah, the complete opposite. And that's one of literally 20 examples that I have. But digress is not one of them. Perfect. Love yep. that. I learned something today. Love that. I mean, I you could have said detrimental. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Courtney, thank you. <laughs> I, yeah, one thing about me, I don't know words or their definitions. <laughs> but we've gotten so much better. I think we have gotten better. Yes. If you listen back to the start of the podcast, there are so many instances of I'll say something and then I'll look at Courtney and I'm like, is that the right word? Yep. Yeah. And I very rarely do that now. Yeah. So we've improved and this podcast has improved my vocabulary, whether you believe that or not. Yeah. It has. What's funny is that we always kept those parts in of the part where like, wait, I said that right. Right. And I mean, I felt as though it was, it was real. It was authentic. <laughs> oh, it very much was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was something else I wanted to say before I got into that. Remember I was like, oh, I digress. And that's why, because I, I was going to digress about off. something else. What were we talking about before? We digressed about a different topic. <laughs> but digress. Yeah. Um, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So why are we getting out of bed, Ashley? Okay. 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 So the only way to have a successful morning routine is to find your why. Why do you need to be up at this time every day? And that's going to be different for everybody. For me more recently, it was impossible for me to find a freaking new morning routine. I was just struggling so much because I was trying to wake up to go on a run. Realistically, the runs only take 45 minutes at max, absolute max. And as I leave my home, there's, there's no commute to and from the gym. Like I truly just need 45 minutes. So there was no reason for me to wake up extra early like 7 a.m was perfect yeah I didn't need to get up at 6 but I wanted to be up and like going on a run at 6 a.m yeah but because there was no true why like I couldn't back up my want it just didn't happen for me yeah so now my newest thing is Pilates which I've talked to you guys about I take the 6 30 a.m class Monday through Friday so and I have, it's in back bay. So in order to get there, I have to leave by 6 a.m., which means I have to be up at 545. So when that second alarm goes off, I don't have a choice. Yeah. So you need a why that is like, okay, if I don't get out of bed, something bad is going to happen. <laughs> AKA, I will be charged $30 yeah, no, that, for missing my Pilates class. I have so many things wrong with that. That is, Pilates is such a ripoff. Like, it is stupid. I don't know I don't know how they can get away with it and how people pay it. Yeah. But here we are. But here we are. Guys, I my money. I bought a two week trial right now and it's definitely so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Such a good workout. I've decided I'm gonna take Joe to a class. Wait, and can I, I take, take Matt to a class? Yes, and I wanna same... take all the guys to the class. Wait, that's what I wanted to do for my birthday that I'd never ended up doing. I was like, I would love to force all of my friends, including guys to work out with me. Wait, you know, it would be fun. And that I saw the other day. What? Um, Kenzie Elizabeth posted like a swipey and I saw a thing and she's like, normalize, sell, normalize, very belated surprise birthday. Oh yes. Yes. I was like, 
I wasn't here for Courtney's birthday. Like, do I throw? And I wasn't there like for a, Ashley's birthday. Like a three month <laughs> delayed, like surprise birthday party. Like how fun. That's hysterical. I just think we need to start having more fun. Yeah. Like there's no rules. Surprise parties rules. for, for anything really. And it just everything. Even, doesn't even need to be a birthday. Yeah. That would actually be hysterical. Yeah. I think that'd be so fun. Yeah. Into that. Back to the Pilates. <laughs> Yeah, great workout. We should bring our boyfriends for sure. Yeah. Um, but that culture of charging people $30. Yeah. So I booked a class. So they charge you $30 if you don't cancel. What? What is it within 24 hours? I think it's like 12 hours or something. It's not even like four hours. I feel like four hours is still doable. Yeah. It's like there's a wait list people of people. People are on the wait list. And then like even when I was on the wait list, I was still like checking as soon as I woke up and I'm like, oh, did I get off or not? Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, I clearly, if you, if you can't hear it in my voice, I'm still having allergy issues. And last week, the allergies just got worse and worse throughout the day. And I had a 5.30 or 6.30 class scheduled and I wanted to cancel it because I had such bad sinus pressure. I couldn't even imagine moving. And I went and I literally, like imagine if, luckily my symptoms were not contagious but imagine if someone was sick and they just didn't want to eat the 30 dollars charge yeah. that's like not sanitary at all so true we should bring that up to them and i also just remembered what i wanted to tell you that oh yeah literally 20 minutes ago yeah yeah because you were talking about not being able to see when you put yes. that cream in yeah so due to my allergies they've been causing me so many issues i can't even begin to explain it I'd have to do a whole episode on them but i've been <laughs> sleeping in the most uncomfortable position because I literally cannot breathe otherwise. What is so this? I've been sleeping literally like like a pencil with my head propped up like this so that my my nose could like drain basically all the sinus pressure. Hurt? So I've been waking up with my neck and spine is out of sorts right now. It is so whacked is up. Is this getting older? <laughs> <laughs> it is it is so my neck and my spine is not okay at this moment so yesterday I was at the gym and I was like I have to stretch out I was like all I need right now is to just hang like literally hold on to like pull up bars okay. and just hang I get up there I let my feet go from underneath me oh no I, and all of a sudden I'm blind. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I started to, to see stars. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Terrifying, <laughs> terrifying. I'm like, oh my god, I can't see. I'm looking around. <laughs> Luckily, it passed. Okay, and I was able to come back safely and, <laughs> and touch the ground. But I was like, something is clearly wrong with, with my head, with my spine, with my fluids. But it was the scariest thing that's ever happened. That's actually really and scary. I explained it to Matt, and he's like, that's what happens when like I. I don't drink water all day and I stand up and I'm like, I've had that sort of feeling before. I've never had the feeling of not being able to see and like my uh, just craziness. But yeah, I was blind for a second. I didn't like the feeling and no, I, I don't think different. I want the cream that you put in your eyes. <laughs> Cause that is not fun. It's, everything's just blurry with the cream. This sounds a lot more intense. No, it was terrible. Oh my God. But yeah. Well, I hope that doesn't happen to you again. I don't think it... I, like, did it. I, I hung, like, a couple more times, and it didn't happen after the okay. first time. But, yeah. It wow. was wild. That is wild. Yeah. But my, my neck felt very... And my back felt so much better after that. So, clearly, it was needed. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to go wipe your face? Yeah. <laughs> so, back to the why. Your why. We digress. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> Your why is having a workout class that you yes. need to get to, otherwise yeah. you get charged. 
my why is simply just wanting to do something for myself before my day starts and I'm literally working for nine plus hours but it could be anything we gave some examples in the beginning of like phoning a friend getting outside like sometimes when I don't wake up at a a time it maybe happens like once every two weeks where I'm like oh I just really need sleep I wake up at 8 45 I roll out of bed I open my computer and I don't leave my house that entire day and like I didn't even I didn't I don't even know what the weather's like outside Mm -hmm. and so what I've started to establish if I decide to like not go to the gym or for example we're recording a podcast in the morning I will walk outside after this and I'll like clear my head and I'll like take in the surroundings and I'll I'll call a family member on the way just so that once again like I'm doing something that I need to get done or something that makes me happy before I can't do anything for the next 10 hours of my day. Yeah. And then for other, <clears throat> for other people that your why may look like a journal prompt in the morning. Yeah. Maybe you're super into journaling. Maybe it's making yourself a really good breakfast. Yeah. Because sometimes we all wake up, grab a coffee and head to work and then you're starving at work. Like maybe it's just having that little moment of peace for yourself in exactly. the morning. Exactly. More often than not though. And I feel like we would both recommend working out. Yeah. Like if you are working out at any other time of the day, like I would highly encourage you to transition it it to the morning and speaking from this, I forced Joe to become a morning workout person and against his will, he will tell you to this day, it was the best change he's ever made. Yeah. Well, it just gets your energy out. And did you know that your brain function is best the first two hours that you're awake? So you, Mm -hmm. even though you may feel groggy, you have the most energy in the morning. Like now that I'm a morning person and I work out in the morning, when I work out after work, I really just feel like I'm so drained and I don't have the energy that I normally would in the morning. As we're working out after work today. Yeah, I know, but whatever. It'll be with a friend. So it'll, it'll be easier. Yeah. So your brain function is optimal. And then what I like to do in the morning is like set up my three priorities and like my personal life and my um like work life so like what are the three non-negotiables that I need to do in both areas of my life I don't create a to-do list of 20 plus items because that might stress you out in the morning but just like get clear and I feel like for anyone that has anxiety about the day ahead it's really easy for you to just kind of jump into whatever you need to do because action is what obviously releases your anxiety but if I just feel like I at least know what I have to do when my day actually starts that automatically kind of sets me apart from just logging on at 9 a.m. and and feeling like so overwhelmed like what like what's going on in my day so personal life professional life three non-negotiables and then three intentions for the day and this is something that you can write out but you can also just like think to yourself as you're walking outside or you're on the treadmill or what as you're driving to your workout whatever it may be and it just makes sure that you're clear-headed and focused for the rest of the day even going through my email like before my actual work day yes yes but clearing out my inbox and saying okay here are the action items like that came out of going through my inbox I just feel so much more prepared totally so I love that I think that's a very good why to get up a little bit earlier yeah okay after establishing your why I feel very strongly about this point like no phones I try to limit my screen time as much as possible in the morning because it just if I see an email pop up that I'll feel like triggered to either answer I'm just like worried about that I need to answer I also use my focus times on my phone so like maybe the people in my life hate it because I don't respond to them right away but I don't receive notifications in certain time windows and that is in the morning for me And then I also have a time limit on like my work email. So I don't get an email like notification to my phone before like 10 a.m. Because otherwise it just derails what Mm. my me time in the morning. Um, And then, of course, I use my phone for like music or a podcast. But outside of that, I'm not on Instagram. I'm not like answering a bunch of text messages unless I have something really timely that I need to get to. And it just makes me feel so much better and that nobody's interrupting that window that I have for myself yeah I love that 
I am the same, except if I wake up and I have a text from Courtney, like, I'm immediately responding to her. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably the only, only one person, yeah. that I respond to. Um, but that's also because you and I have a relationship that, like, when I text you, I expect nothing in return yes until like your time and same thing with you like you probably texted me at like 10 p.m or something yes. and I'm like you know I'm asleep so it's yes. like oh I'm just gonna answer it when I see it yeah so there's no like immediate response which I love personally yeah, me <laughs> I too. think it's so great me too um so yeah, I'll answer Courtney and then the only other thing I usually only have a podcast going um but more recently because sometimes when I when I drive to Pilates, because I get there early, I leave at six. It's not till six thirty, and like realistically, I could leave later, but I yeah. it's called anxiety, and I should, <laughs> I have to be on time. So if I get there, I'll sit in my car, and what I've been doing is I'll just go through my Gmail inbox and yep, just clear, clear it out. out. Because the other day I had like seventy unread emails, and I was like, Ashley, this is so not you. Like I have anxiety about this, so I just went through. And then last night I went through my work inbox. Guess how many things were in my inbox? Over 400. Wow. So I got it down to one. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was like a, I've been, I had been putting my work one off for a while. But anyways, all to say in the morning, I agree. Absolutely no phones. If you are opening social media first thing in the morning, you are just setting your mind up for failure. Yeah. Like you hate yourself. Yeah. Essentially. No, no, truly. Like if you want to have a good day like do not look at social media yeah. until as late as yes. as you possibly can yeah and then the final piece of our morning routine is have a little bevy moment that you look forward to yes. that could be coffee that could be tea that could be my personal setup of at least three to four beverages at a time that consists of water something green um, an electrolyte I've just started adding to my, to my, uh, morning beverages. Yep. And coffee. Of course. And making sure that you're not having coffee is the first sip of something throughout the day or in the morning. This sorry. This is in fact the first thing I've sipped today. Yeah. Podcast days Pod- they are don't built count. different. Yeah. They don't, but count. I mean, let's talk about our mornings really quick. Yeah. Even okay. on a podcast, we woke up at a, before six. Yep. We made our beds. Mm-hmm. Did you make your bed? Well, Joe is still in bed. Yeah. Okay. So is he still in bed right now? No, he went to the gym. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he made the I bed. I never know if Joe's here. The, <laughs> he makes the bed, but he doesn't put the pillows on. So it's like... That's like psycho The behavior. bed is made, but like he... So I have to then put the pillows on. But because I'm the first one out of bed, I started like making my side and he got so mad at me. And I'm like, okay, but like you're sleeping on your side. Like why can't I make my side of the bed? Oh my god. So now I'm not allowed... To put the pillows on the bed. Making bed. Then I honestly, I did do my little priorities already. I like started it last night. I finished it this morning. But typically I do that after the podcast. We got our little bevy. We recorded the podcast, which is our me activity before the Mm -hmm. workday starts. And so we can still, no matter what we're doing, for the most part, maintain that morning routine. Yeah, absolutely. The best thing that's worked for me is getting up at the same time every single day so it's so consistent so whether I'm going to a workout class or I'm recording the podcast I'm up at the same time every day which which allows me to go to bed at the same time every day and the more consistent you are I think that's the key to success yeah if like one day you're waking up at seven and then one day you're waking up at six and then another day you're waking up at eight your body's like what the heck are you doing to me yeah yeah it's so difficult yeah so yeah even though today looks a little bit different than our usual it still follows the The same same routine exactly exactly to close us out consistency is key you have to start gradually if you're not a morning person that's like obvious but the whole point of this is to help you feel more prepared and confident to your day and make sure that you have enough time to focus on you before life takes you in all these different directions and what's interesting too is like on those days where you roll out of bed and you just immediately start your day I feel so behind and like just ill prepared for the day. And I think when you establish a morning routine, that's really easy to translate no matter the environment, no matter the day, super simple, easy to stay consistent with, 
then I feel like you just bring the confidence and preparation that you brought into your day into different aspects of your life. Like maybe you feel more prepared for that meeting you have at work. Maybe you feel more excited and confident to show up to that social situation because you were able to kind of prepare and bring your best self to the situation. But at the end of the day, it looks different for everybody. And so take what we have to say and then figure out what works for you. Yeah. And if you're still not motivated, I just want to drive that point home. The confidence that a morning routine will give you is unmatched. All you have to do is start like the first week is the hardest, but give us like two consistent weeks of establishing a morning routine. You will feel so good. You won't want anything to come in the way of you and your morning routine. There are days when I show up to the office after waking up at 545, doing a workout, getting ready, having breakfast, having a whole thing of water, coffee's in my system, and I showed up on the desk to my first meeting, and I'm like, I feel so good about myself. Yeah. I'm so proud of myself. I kept those promises to myself, which gives confidence. And then also just looking around and being like, wow, none of these people know that I just had a morning. Yeah. What did you do? You probably rolled out of bed and commuted your way on into the office. Yeah. It just like gives you a, wow, I'm doing life. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing and, things. And it's unmatched. It, it is unmatched. That's the perfect way to close this up. Well, good luck to you in uh, your morning routines. Please let us know if there's anything that you do that you think we would enjoy doing or adding to it. We love you so much. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend, maybe your accountability partner that helps you in the morning, maybe someone that you think needs a better morning routine. Remember to rate us five stars, like, follow, subscribe. And that's a wrap. Talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,